Right, I was going to go through some, and thank you, Christian, for that, um, uh, through a series of slides on cyber terrorism, but some of them are already being covered. Um, just some sort of headline points, and I think it's interesting, again, in the last 24 hours, we've had a mega global attack taking down big financial services, mass shipping, uh, WPP, um, and obviously things will come out in the wash from that. But I suppose what I take from that and from a WannaCry incident uh, a few weeks ago, which took down not just the National Health Service in the UK, but lots of other global issues, is the inter interconnect interconnectivity and the losses which that's going to incur. Uh, and picking up on the themes which we've had from other speakers about terrorists learning off um, other individuals, whether they're states, whether they're criminals, and they're saying, if they can do that and achieve effect, why don't we? Um, so I think the context is there, and I, I don't need to lecture at all about the significance of what we face in terms of cyber challenges. I re-emphasize the point which um, uh, was made um, right at the beginning about the virtual caliphate, the defeat and the military defeat of um, Daesh in particular in Syria and Iraq, and this dispersion of activity. It's not just virtual in terms of where they're going to go, and, and Jamie talked about the 19 or so affiliates which are springing up around the world, the homegrown uh, responses which we're seeing, but the virtual fact that they're going online, and that's where we cannot hunt them down, we cannot prosecute, prosecute them uh, in terms of uh, preventing them from carrying out attacks. And the real challenge which we face is in terms of the encryption, which is increasing daily, and the challenges which our security intelligence services globally have been able to interdict those signals. We will get there technically, but it will take us some time to do it. So the way they have a, a, an advantage over us at the moment. Um, Jamie again covered all the sort of enabling activities which terrorists are currently using, whether it's fundraising, whether it's recruiting, it's the spread of the ideology, it's the rhetoric, it's the instruction to their followers, if I could call them that, to carry out unsophisticated attacks off the shelf or the more sophisticated. The use of online recipes to make, whether it's ricin uh, um, uh, devices, which we saw in 2014 in London, but also elsewhere, or how to make homemade explosives into quite sophisticated devices. And Masood, who carried out the um, Westminster Bridge attack in London uh, three months ago, he was messaging on Telegram five minutes before that attack. So this sort of virtual space, they're already occupying what one might call the facilitation enabling. Spreading into the next sphere in terms of disruptive activity, um, not just of starting taking down people's websites and spreading the propaganda, but also potentially looking at that fundraising activity which was talked about. Is the ransomware done by a cri uh, criminal and demanding bitcoins or actually is it falling into uh, terrorist um, pockets? We don't know enough about that at the moment. But the big concern which we are, which the security services across Europe and wider are, are worried about is what is called is doxing, which is a stealing of personal information online of high profile individuals, uh, VIPs, politicians, military personnel, and using that as part of their attack planning methodology. Uh, still early to, too early to tell who uh, hacked into the um, uh, Westminster Houses of Parliament website, uh, uh, internet, facilities and stole all the details of politicians. But if I was a politician in London, I would be extremely worried of who now has that information and where it has been sold online uh, to other perpetrators who might want to use that information. So I think the, the, the issue of cyber terrorism is the sort of technology transfer which we see in other methodologies going into those more destructive acts uh, of, ter of cyber, which we've seen the Stuxnets, was referred to our former speaker by the attack on a German steel mill. There are a lot of examples where states, state-sponsored or criminals have hacked into control systems, SCADA systems, building manage management systems, and cause destructive effect. And my judgment is that terrorists will follow suit shortly after that. Um, and I mentioned yesterday, and it's come up here again today, the increasing nexus between criminals and terrorists and this transfer of ideas, thoughts, whether it's for money or, or otherwise. And criminals are becoming more savvy, more sophisticated uh, in how they're using cyber space. So we can expect terrorists to follow suit. But in terms of where we stand and the current threat of, of cyber terrorism and the ability to do destructive acts, I think the professional judgment is that they are still some way off capability. 
they have the intent, they aspire to get to that ability, but certainly the more pressure we put on them physically, we harden targets, how are they going to come round and attack us under the soft underbelly? Um, again, professional uh, judgment or professional opinion might be that is some years away. My opinion is actually I think we'll see that closure of that gap much quicker and hence why we as an industry need to respond with appropriate cyber terrorism uh, uh, um, uh, insurance uh, uh, capability. Full re, we're looking at the moment, uh, subject to Treasury approval, to include uh, cyber terrorism within our wider scheme. And that would be a physical uh, loss caused by a fire or explosion, but very much by a cyber trigger uh, and keep it very restricted. And we can discuss more of that later. Um, I think I'll, I'll hold it there because uh, I'm conscious we've got 20 minutes left and I'd really like to um, hear your thoughts and questions for the um, panel, which you've heard speak for the last 40 minutes. So if I could ask you just to say who you are um, and where you come from and who you'd like the question to go to. Uh, if we run short of, of questions, we've got a whole host we can ask each other, but I'd much prefer them to come from you guys. Great, if you could pass that down, that'd be terrific. And I'll hand this over if anyone wants to do the same this side. Um, I, I'm Gordon. Gordon.